it up in the headphones. I thought I got away from, from the sermon I was prepping for because it was weighty, and I was telling some of the elders in training, I was like, yo, I don't want to. I don't want to preach this. It's, I don't want to do it and because um, I'm going to lose friends. And they said, well, good thing you're not here to, um, to gain friends necessarily. Um, and I was really happy that um, on Monday, I mean, just God pressed it on our hearts um, to, to change the message. Um, but the main passages are Matthew 7 and 25, if some of you guys um, know what that passage is, is about. It's kind of terrifying about um, Jesus telling people, depart from me, you cursed. So um, that's how our God does things. But, but here's what I do know. When the Holy Spirit um, changes things up with me, uh, uh, yeah, changes things up with me, it typically means that someone definitely, he definitely has a word for someone specifically in this room or podcast, video, whatever. Um, Lionel, am I moving too much? All right. <laughs> All right. I, I walk around, man. Drew, your, 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 your guitar might be... Broken. All right, so I've really had to pray a lot uh, for God to shut me, shut me up and just say what um, he would have us um, here today. Actually, last night I was telling Katie, I was complaining to her that, um, I mean, just God pressed it upon my heart to cut the sermon in half. So you guys are kind of lucky. You know, um, it, was, it was a lot and i um, kind of happy now, um, now that I'm up here and uh, my nerves are starting to take over. So um, let's go ahead and... Um, and Take out your Bibles. We're going to be in Nehemiah 1. We're going to do the entire chapter. Uh, let's go ahead and start with verse 1. Now it happened in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year, I was in Susa, the citadel, citadel um, that Hanani, yes, I mean, that's me, uh, one of my brothers came with certain men from Judah, and I asked them from, um, concerning the Jews who escaped. Uh, who had survived the exile and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O Lord God of heaven, great and awesome God, who keeps covenant, and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive to your eyes uh, and your eyes open to the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. Actually, we can stop right there. Um, I wanted us to focus on verse 4. Um, it says, as soon as. So, I mean, we already have to stop right there. Uh, I'll tell you a, a snippet of, of what this sermon is going to be about. Basically, I want us to, I want to see if, if the God of Nehemiah is our God. Okay? Um, when, when you hear these kinds of stories of God's name being defamed, when you hear someone from your community going through something, I mean, does that rock your soul? You know what I mean? Like, does that actually give you some kind of a response, some kind of effect, because if it doesn't, um, that's something that we need to look into, and that's, that's hopefully what um, we go through today, um, because if you could care less about that, then um, we're in trouble. So um, let's, let's continue reading verse 6 through 9, um, and then we'll get at it. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night. For the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and keep my commandments, and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of the heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place where I have chosen and make my name dwell there. I wanted us to start from verses 6 to 9 because um, it's very, very important and critical that we get what the gospel is, um, that we get what God is communicating through what he has given 
um, through the heart of Nehemiah and how we're supposed to respond to it. Okay, God is showing us a glimpse of his heart through Nehemiah, and it's critical because um, this book can easily be one of those books where um, you get a weight put on you, where you have to do this, you have to, um, I should be more of this, I should not be more of that, I should become more of this kind of person, uh, and, and, and it becomes um, a weight on us. Now, don't get me wrong, we are as Christians, if you are a Christian, uh, we are called to be more Christ-like, progressively more Christ-like, and we are supposed to um, progressively grow in Christ, and, and, and that means, hey, staying away from sin, getting victories over sin, and all of that, but if we don't understand why it is that we do that, then I think it'll crush us, okay? Um, and actually, if, if we don't understand why it is that we do what we do, become what we become, then we, to God, it becomes filthy rags. And for some of you Bible scholars, that means monthly rags, if you know what I mean. Um, it, becomes, it becomes what he calls rubbish. And in Greek, that's excrement. So it's a pile of, mm -hmm, okay, Philippians 3. Isaiah, I'm not making this up, man. It's Isaiah 64, 6, Philippians 3, 8. So, um, so, so that's why it's really important for us. Um, so the heart and intent need to be informed by um, inform our content. Can I say that? Yes. So our heart and intent need to inform the content, the things that we do. Okay? If we get the heart wrong, everything falls apart. Otherwise, we become, uh, if it doesn't, uh, we become legalist. And if you don't know what uh, legalism is, it's essentially you trying to do things to earn God's favor somehow. And... Um, and only end up in the horrific text in Matthew 7 where Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? So for us it could be, Lord, didn't, didn't I serve in the children's ministry like Tara asked? Didn't I serve in, in this kind of ministry? Uh, didn't, didn't I set up that function? Uh, um, didn't I rep you well with my, you know, catchy Christian T-shirts and bumper stickers? By the way, uh, where's Will? Um, Will asked me why I don't put bumper stickers in my car. I am not holy enough to drive with, you know, <laughs> repping Jesus. I am Asian, first of all, and, um, and um, I will keep going. My wife said so. All right. So for us, it could be like that, you know, um, Lord, Lord, didn't I... Um, have perfect attendance on Sunday, right? I actually took notes, right? He doesn't care. I mean, and it's terrifying because he says afterwards, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Okay? I want us to get, to, to make sure that we get the heart right. Okay? And that kind of passage, it, it terrifies me, man, because I'm one of those where if you say, oh, we need this or we need that, yeah, bet, let's go. You know, I'm just one of those where why wouldn't I do that? Like, I get to serve the church. Unfortunately, sometimes I don't pray about it, and, and sometimes I'm the biggest enemy of that prayer. Okay, sometimes it's better for me to show weakness. Sometimes it's better for me to not do it and let someone else do it. So, um, um, so if, if you're a note taker, uh, write this down. We should, my, our prayer here is that we do not mix sanctification with justification. Sanctification and justification. Justification, you have been legally declared innocent by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Okay, by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2. Now, I have a baby, a really cute baby daughter in the back, and, um, and she, she has this new thing where she likes to really clean things up, right? Like, you know, after she eats with stuff all over her hair, like, like she likes to... Th think that she's cleaning herself up. Unfortunately, some of your, your parents know that this is a fact. When your kid tries to clean themselves up or clean something up, typically they make a bigger mess. Amen? All right. So we cannot clean ourselves up. Justification, remember, legally declared innocent by who? By God. Okay? And, um, and she cannot clean herself up. And, and just like how my daughter doesn't even realize she's dirty sometimes. She'd be eating stuff on her face like, you know, and she doesn't even realize she's dirty. That's us. That's how God found us when he saved us. While we were yet 
sinners, while we were still sinners, Romans 5. Okay, when I give my baby a bath after she messes herself up, um, as I mentioned, her goal is to not die in that bathtub, right? Okay, her goal is to not die. When I give her a bath, I am, that's not even in my, this is bad, dude. I, I should just read. For real, man, that, this is not cool. All right. <laughs> when I give my baby daughter a bath, <laughs> she gets this, I know, I'll never preach again. There's elders in training saying, mm-hmm. This dude, not a rag, monthly rag, this cat. All right. She gets to sit there and enjoy the bath while I clean her up, okay? She, 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 she is uh, what Matt Chandler says is the passive agent, right? I'm the active agent. I'm the one cleaning herself up. If I left her there alone, she would, A, not only come out dirtier than she was when I put her in there, but she would probably die, okay? Sanctification. Okay, so we got justification, declared innocent. Sanctification is the process by which God progressively molds us, progressively, meaning you progress, okay? Progressively molds us into the image of his son. Also, really important to know that God does it, yeah? Okay, so the goal is sanctification is not to be saved. It is not to be saved, okay? That's not the goal of sanctification. God didn't save us and say, all right, Little camper, now you run the race. It is not a relay race where God hands us the baton and says to Jamar, now you go finish it. That is not the race that we're in. Okay? So verse 4, it says, as soon as Nehemiah heard the news, God deposited into Nehemiah's heart a glimpse of God's heart. Okay? And, what, and here's, the, here's the second thing I want us to, to, to make sure we understand. And what the proper response should be. Okay. AJ, are you saying that I should always be responding that way when, you know, um, I hear that a church is not preaching Christ? You better. If not, then you probably don't care about Christ. No one slaps my wife. I don't know karate, but I'll kill you. You know? <laughs> like, I don't know. I need to stop with that word. Those verbiage. I'll stay with my notes again. All right. But... But now, for real, but, but, but does the defamation of God's character, his people, when his people are suffering, do you have this kind of reaction? As soon as, not, not all right, oh, wow, yeah, I'll pray for you, fam, and then, you know, um, go home and probably not even do it. No, as soon as he heard these words, he sat down and wept and mourned for days. And then what did he do afterwards? He continued to fast and mourn, okay? Um, if, if you're not... If you're not affected in any way that God's name is being defamed, that's something alarming, okay? Uh, when, when something extremely painful happens to you, like, I don't know, your arm gets broken in half, you don't look at it and say, oh, I'll respond to that later. No, you naturally react to it, okay? And, and if our loved ones are getting slaughtered, you naturally will react and do something immediately. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. Okay, and we do have people praying for you. I, I don't even know what to say to you if, if, if you don't have a response to that. Okay, um, so Nehemiah's reverence for, his passion, that is tiny, his reverence for, his passions for, his affections for God caused him to have, to, to cry and crumble like the, the walls of Jerusalem. Okay, you should be troubled if you're not troubled that, that this church, let's say, for instance, once again, not off my, that, that this church struggles in setting up. You should weep if you're not weeping that this church struggles for, it, um, for all of the little ministries, which, by the way, Tinsley's got like a ton of ministries in the back, just saying. Okay? You should be. Okay? You shouldn't be watching people. Do, I want something else. All right. Okay? But here's the thing. We will not care for God's church unless we know that God is worth glorifying. Okay? See? All right, I'll say it again then. Okay. We will not care much for the church or have our hearts break for the church for that matter unless we care for God's glory because the as an aspect of his glory being seen, Ephesians 3, is through his what? His manifold wisdom. Seen through his what? 
his church, you, the bride, if you're a Christian in here. So Jerusalem, his church, is a representation of God, and them being defamed and in shame is a representation of God's name being defamed and in shame. And this just made Nehemiah crumble for days, actually four months. And here's the thing, too, side note. Um, his prayers wasn't just prayers and it just sat there. Like, his prayers actually turned into action. Okay, we, we, we don't just say, I'll pray for you, bro, and, A, not really pray for them, and then not follow up with them, and, and, and not do something practical. What does James have to say uh, about that? Now, I hope you stay warm. You got three cloaks on. All right? So the obvious question flows, that, that flows from this is how often are we like Nehemiah because there's not that many differences from, from his time and our time, okay? Now, remember, um, I'm trying to, uh, to point out that uh, Jerusalem is representation of his church, okay? There's not that many differences from his time and our time. Christ, th there's a lot of Christless churches. First of all, you're not a church unless you preach Christ. Stop it, okay? So... So there are a lot of churches not preaching Christ, and the ones that do preach Christ are the ones that typically are, are struggling because they do preach Christ, and they don't tickle ears. So people don't flock to that. They're like, what? You want me to confess my what? No. And then, and then go. Leave my zippers and my pockets alone, right? Even though that's not how Jesus spoke. Um, and true biblical fellowship, true Christian like. Oh, nice Acts 2 type community. Since that's so rare, I'd say including maybe our church. Search your heart. Okay? Including us. Then, th then there's a lot of saints. There's a lot of saints, man, that, that, that have a lot of needs, including the need to confess, the need to be rebuked. There's a lot of needs, physical, emotional, spiritual needs that are not being met. This is the state that we, that we live in. You know, um, Katie and uh, Katie and I was watching, a, or I went in the kitchen, and, and I saw her watch a show. Um, and this, this lady said something to the effect of, like, work Christian enough or something like that. How do you become Christian enough? Like, for real, like, you, you become Christian enough? So, I, I mean, that's what, that's what we're in, man. And if that doesn't break your heart, we're in trouble. So how are you doing? Um, so so let, let's now take it into just the body church. And I know that we have a lot of um, new guests typically here. Um, not today, because I guess the charge might be playing. I don't know. Um, we usually have a lot of uh, new guests shopping around for churches. And, and look, I don't have anything about sh um, shopping around for churches because, well, I do kind of. But, um, but I, do would, I do want you guys to be, um, to be here checking us out, checking out our statement of faith checking to see if we're actually biblical and we actually apply those truths. But there comes a point where you need to get into a church ASAP and join it because that means that there's a church out there with your specific uh, gifting that God gave you to use for that church is currently struggling, okay? Um, we don't shop for churches. This isn't a buffet. Um, so I want us to... Um, to have a gauge. Uh, a test could be, how, how are we doing in terms of seeing the practical needs of, of the body church? Like, how does your heart break for the church's practical needs? May that be community needs or uh, ministry needs? Is God's family, his church, cared about and cared for by you? Or are we just, like I said already, one of those people, I'll pray for you, fam, and do nothing about it. Okay. Now, when, we are, when we're serving in our ministries, I mean, it's, it's really just less about setting things, I don't know, setting up chairs, for example, and just getting those things done so that we could function. But it's more about an, a, an act of worship, right? Um, do you know who, who, who uses me or who uses, who God uses uh, to grow me a lot? I mean, uh, Mike's not here, but it would be people like Mike Knight, or Jamar's sitting right there, even Rhea. Um, because the, these, I, I watch them, and they do things, and afterwards, they don't even care for the applause. They just look around to see if, there was a, if, if there's a need and if there's a way that God can use them. Because they know that setting up is, is, is more than just setting up, man. Like, this is, this is God's honor. 
You know, we should be doing things in excellence, right? Um, so, so I, Mike Knight, man, that dude, he's not here, so I guess I, I can talk, to, talk about him. Um, <laughs> oh, um, that's good community. So, Mike Knight, man, uh, first of all, um, from, the out, from the looks of things, well, I mean, for, for some of you guys, uh, you might, you know, your friends might not look like him. My friends do, you know, and, 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 and I just love the fact that God is doing a work in him. Man, it, it's just phenomenal. He, uh, we went to the men's conference, and, like, you could just see him just light up, and, and I was just so happy that, that, that God allowed me to, um, to be a part of that, and he even shopped for a, ch- for a shirt. It was hilarious. And, and when I found out that, um, that he, took the, he takes the bus and does all kinds of stuff, takes like an hour and a half to come here, and then, um, and he's not, you know, when, when he was new here, he started just setting things up just because. And, you know, I'm, I'm asking him, like, why are you doing that? He's like, well, because it needs to be done, you know? And I was like, dang, you know, I, I, I wish more people thought like that. I wish I thought like that. Now, obviously, there's a little... Um, I need to get, get all my notes, man. See, I get in trouble. Um, obviously, um, there's something in us where um, sometimes we don't need to do that, right? So, I'm all over the place. Lord, help me. Who here has ever went through um, a season where you were dating someone that you, you were just, I don't know what the term is, like you were just like, ooh, goo goo gaga over with, butterflies all over the place? Raise your hand. All right, everybody. I was like, there's two, two people lonely. Man, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, like, okay. Now, when, when Jamar serves God in this way, it's kind of like that. It's not even work for him. It's not. I'm not a morning person, so I, 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 I applaud him even more. But, but it's not even work for him. He's just like, no, nah, it's, just, it's just I want to. You know, when, when we first meet that, th- that other person, you're just like, man, she's, she, she's pretty. You know, um, she's hot, she's beautiful, uh, man, he's all that, da-da-da. Um, you, you, yeah, you know, eight-pack, crazy. So, um, so you do things for him or her, right? You do things, like, like, like you'll stay up all night and you go, no, you get off, you know? Like, like you'll do things like that, right? Staying up, you'll, uh, men who supposedly aren't romantic are Googling, you know, free dates, you know, like, like best way to da-da-da-da. Like, y- y- you exert all this effort into um, making sure that they are, A, pleased, B, that they are shown. You, you know, you Instagram all your stuff. Oh, look at this cake I made her, you know. Um, you, you, you Instagram all of this. You shout to the world, to Facebook, like, yo, look, this girl, this man, he's worth it. And that's what Jamar does. I'm sorry for picking you in, man. You, you're in the front. Um, but that's really what he does, and it's amazing because people like him would typically be the ones that's like, man, come on, man, don't talk to me, or, or don't talk about me like that. You know, I just want to serve, you know. That's amazing. I wish I was, I was more like that. Now, um, like I said, this, this sermon does not apply um, to the ones who are um, working their tails off because usually um, those working their, t- their tails off are the ones that greatly desire um, God's glory. And they're usually the ones sitting in here saying, oh, no, you know what? I do need to do some more. No. No, you don't. Okay, as a fellow, that kind of person, I'm here to tell you how, um, let me share with you how, how God typically deals with me with that. Um, my love language is sarcasm. And um, when, when I start d- doing things like that, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, like Vic has told me on numerous occasions, he's like, you're not the answer, AJ, be quiet. You know, um, so, so, so when I'm at that state, Like, God just tells me and says, (laughs) how do I put this? Um, God tells me, hey, hey, um, moron, hey, want to be superhero Bruce Lee, dude. Listen, there's already been a savior of the world, and you're not him, right? And you don't even know karate, and you're Asian, so chill out, (laughs) you know? I'm learning, though. Um, So, so, I, I mean, what we need to do at that point People who are like this, who have this proclivity, we need to just be more like Nehemiah um, and just weep and mourn for days. And after that, continue to do so. Because sometimes um, we're not the answer, 
And sometimes we're the enemy of that answer if you do it ourselves, if we do it ourselves. Um, and just, man, I was just, I, I just kept reading verse 4, and I just couldn't imagine how, um, because of Nehemiah's prayers, the trajectory of generations upon generations, which we um, are, I mean, this is the fruit of, one, uh, of his prayer, really, if you think about it. I mean, his prayers change generations. And so if you're an intercessor, uh, intercessor in here, man, I, call me up. Okay, I'll, I'll pray with you for hours. I would love to, okay? Because we're here trying to do things that we literally cannot do, okay? Only God can do what our goal is, okay? That's to change hearts, change lives, and do all of that. I mean, Drew can sing, you know, Drew can sing, but he, does, he can't change hearts, okay? Vic can preach, but he can't change hearts. So um, I invite you to, uh, to please join me in, in prayer, okay? Um, now, <laughs> now, some of us, we need to serve, okay? Some of us, it's for our own good, it's for our own joy, and we're robbing ourselves of the joy that preachers preach about if we don't serve. It's almost like a cast, okay? Serving for you would be like a cast. What does a cast do to a broken bone? Okay, heals it, puts it back into place, you know, realigns you back to God, right? And what else, what happens to that bone after it's broken and then it, it heals? It gets stronger. So some of us need to serve and just put that on, okay? Um, we need to just put this cast on uh, of serving in ministry. Um, start applying the truths that you talk about. I mean, that's, that's really what it is. You can't possibly tell me that you come here every Sunday, learn something, and then come on a, um, go out there and your, your life screams that that meant nothing. That's scary to me. And um, all week or since Monday when um, God decided to change it up on me, like I've been praying and fasting just, just knowing that, that there's going to be some people here who, who, who's going to hear this and just be like, you're a jerk. That doesn't apply to me. Susan and Bob should have been here. You know, yeah, they, they need to hear this, okay? Um, no, you do. Now, unfortunately, some of us are blindsided. Um, in, in this passage, it talks about, you know, uh, we confessed our sins, we. Now, um, there are some sins that we, we have no idea. Is, it's even there. It's even brewing in us, okay? Some of us are blindsided, and by definition, you cannot see these things. And that's why uh, community and authentic relationships are really vital because you're blindsided. You can't see it. Um, it's like a chiropractor. Um, I'm laughing because um, I need to go to a chiropractor, but I'm really scared, man. <laughs> it, like, it, it, they twist it. But, but anyway, um, a good community is like a good chiropractor um, who, who could see your back is misaligned, and because, you know, C4, C5, I, I don't know what it was. I was trying to look it up. But, but apparently, if, let's say, your neck is a little bit misaligned this way, you can't see it, you can't really feel it, but, but that little misalignment can cause, you know, nausea, can cause headaches, perpetual monthly rag type moments, you know, like, like, like lots of um, just, stri oh, oh, nose, um, nosebleeds, all kinds of stuff. I Googled it, so you might want to... Um, Look at a .edu site for it. But this is the kind of things that, that happens when your back is misaligned. Okay? Sometimes you, you, you can't even use the bathroom properly if your back is misaligned. But you don't know that it's your back. So um, in the same way, um, our community, if, if God has laid it on your heart to call someone on something, if you're starting to notice some ins inconsistencies um, in someone's life, like they say this but live like this, it's your duty as a Christian Okay. God didn't put that, that on your heart for nothing. It's your duty as a Christian to at least approach him. At least approach him and, and ask him, hey, you're saying this, you're living this way, you say God is this, but I see your Facebook this, what's going on? And let me tell you something, if someone loves you biblically enough um, to do that, man, how foolish would you be to just say, you don't know my situation. Get out of here with that. But that's dumb. If someone says your, your back is misaligned and this is why you can't sleep, this is why you can't eat, swallow, how foolish would you be to say, 
You don't really need that. You know that. Okay. Mm, just the Holy Spirit leading, so I can't. Jason Shanley and I, okay, we were, and I'm not just saying this just because I love that dude. I love that guy. I'll tell you why. He loves me enough to, to call me on things. Now, maybe this doesn't uh, apply to, um, to women, but for guys, men, let me tell you how unloved you are. When was the last time that someone approached you on something, even if it's in the middle of the conference, <laughs> right? And Sh- Shanley and I are like, oh, you know, like, like we, we talk like this, right? It's cartwheel and everything. You know, like, like people passing by in the conference like, yo, like, they, they okay? Um, are they married? Right? Um, like, men, honestly, raise your hand if someone the past week has called you on something. Shanley, one, two, three, four. Even Tara raised her hand. <laughs> okay, that's how unloved we are. That means someone doesn't love you enough to, to tell you that, hey, um, this path leads to death, and you might want to get off. Isn't that terrible? All right, feel the spirit leading again. Um, now, if someone comes at you and you didn't like the way they, they approached you, please understand that biblically, oh, no. Um, biblically, that's okay, okay? Not them saying things not in love, but I'm just saying um, how God does things, that's, he, he can do that. Balaam's ass. I can say that. It's in the Bible. Numbers 22. Check it out. Okay? God used an ass to rebuke somebody. So if someone comes at you and say, if you discount, here, I got it. Uh, if you discount what they're saying because of the way... How they said it, you're off. You're off. Okay? Because God can use a donkey to rebuke someone. And can you imagine if he just said, first of all, a donkey's talking, right? That's amazing. Okay? <laughs> okay? So, so God can use these means, and it doesn't negate the fact that the contents of that is something that you could just throw away. Okay, so if someone's calling you on something, I don't care how they do it. Ask around. And if, and if people confirm, yeah, you're kind of a jerk. Yeah, you seem kind of angry, AJ. You know, <laughs> deal with it. Confess it some more. Okay, um, Ronnie's actually um, in the back. And I told him uh, when, uh, okay, look, it's, it's you know, um, a new religion comes up every, um, every year. It's called, you know, who's going to, NFL. Okay, and... Um, <laughs> And I, and I told him, look, man, like, this is taking my affections. I almost felt like um, I work really, 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 really hard in the off season so that during NFL season, I don't have to serve as much. Like, that's how I feel. And, and, and so I, I asked Ronnie, I'm like, look, man, I'm not just saying this just because I need you to ask me percentage. Percentage meaning of, of where my heart and affections and what I did was, how am I doing with God? Look here. Loving with all of your what? Heart, mind, and soul? Is, does that mean all? Greek. Jason, in Greek, does all mean all? Totally. Okay? So I ask him, hey, percentage-wise, ask me these things. And sometimes he does, randomly. Hey, AJ, what's the percentage? And I'm like, oh. What happened was, you know. Now, um, I'm not saying that, you know, you, you got to be rigid and, and not enjoy things. But I will say this, if it's the seventh time you're watching the same stupid highlight, you might want to change. You, you, that's, the, that's the yellow flag. That's the yellow flag. Okay? But if you're also like me where I'm just like, I will not watch football, that's a yellow flag too. Because that means you're not, a, that's legalism. And that's damnable. It is. I don't even know where I'm at with my notes, and that's why like, I just keep going like this. I'm like, I don't know where I'm at. I really don't, but it's okay. It's okay because the Holy Spirit laid this on my heart, and it's, it's, it's okay. That was for somebody. I don't know who it was for. Probably me. Yeah. But, 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 but if that is you, I mean, okay, 
Here's what's really hard about, um, about these kind of, kinds of um, messages. Because the ones that they're not for are the ones that'll say, man, I got to do more of that. And the ones that, that it is for are typically the self-righteous, or mm, I don't want to call you a self-righteous person, but you think highly of yourself. Okay, so, so this is for you. The ones that don't serve and think highly of themselves and, you know, are not going all out hard at the paint. You know, we sing that and we don't live it. It's ridiculous. So, so this is for you. Here's why it's hard. Because you are the one that's arguing with me saying, that ain't for me. You know who, who it's for? Susan and Bob. Vic, who's in New Orleans. No, I'm kidding. Don't, maybe. I don't know. We're, we're sinful wicked. Like that, that's your thought. So, so you're arguing with me saying that, yeah, I wish Sue and Bob was here to hear this. Yeah, they totally should be. I wish they were here. Mm-hmm. Or, or you're going to argue with me and say, AJ, you, you have no idea what my situation is. You're right. I probably don't. But God does. He knows it fully. He knows it better than you and I. And he's still going to hold you accountable for why you just sat there while his blood-bought, blood-bought beloved suffered for his name. So don't tell me that you don't understand my situation. Oh, you're right. Maybe I don't. But God does. Man, AJ, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Careful, care, careful with what you say because he will. You're right. He is going to judge you. So don't be quick to say, don't judge me. Only God can. Think about what you're saying. And God forbid that you're one of the many in Matthew 7, and some of us will be separated, the goats on the left, okay? And God judges by saying, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And that is terrifying. That's terrifying. There are nights where I literally cannot sleep because of the weight of this. Last night, <laughs> Leilani, what, what time did I send you my outline finally? Like 5? 437. I could not sleep because this is not a game to me. It's weighty. Matthew 7 and 25 is real for some of you. On your last dying breath, you are going to hear, not good and faithful servant. No, you're going to hear, go to my left. Fix my notes. All right. Matthew 25 says, depart from me, you cursed. Verse 41. Um, depart from me, you cursed, in the eternal fire pre- prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Leaving your brothers and sisters in Christ hanging physically, emotionally, spiritually. Not caring about them while they, while they labor to serve a God that they think is worthy. While they suffer, while you eat whatever that they're not. Okay? They're suffering, needing someone just, just to babysit, and you don't. This is how it gets real. You're going to be judged for how you, we are all going to be judged for how we treated each other. Okay? Now, am I saying, can, oh, AJ, are you, are you questioning my salvation? Maybe. Maybe you need that. I would, look, I would rather someone have you, um, have you do what, uh, what's his name? Um, was it Peter or Paul? <laughs> Um, who said, hey, work out your uh, salvation with? If it applies, if the shoe fits, go. Okay? Man, some of us even, I'm sorry, I'm going to whatever, I'll say this. Like you just sit there, not only do you sit there, but you critique how it should be, how it could be. But let me tell you, man, on that last day, Unless Christ is merciful to you, depart from me, you cursed. Verse 6. Um, verse 4 through 6. 
soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continued to fast and pray before the God of heaven. And I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive, uh, attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant. Now I pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants. Is God's glory and renown on your radar? Renown, his name being made famous. The fame of his name. Like, do you, do you care? Right now, sitting here, do you, can you honestly, don't be honest with me, okay? Because we could be, we could lie to ourselves pretty well. You could lie to your mama. You, you could lie yourself. You, we could operate in a, uh, in a self, self-deceit that's a, that, it's amazing. I know, because I'm one of them, right? No, AJ, you're, you're all right. No, I'm not. So, so if we were to be honest with not ourselves, not with, with each other, but, but with God, do you really care? Do we really care about that? Because to the degree that we care and understand the gospel is the degree that we're going to understand verse 4, why it is that Nehemiah, you know, as soon as, you know, he started mourning and praying, to the degree that we get the gospel. Okay, the gospel, for those of you who don't know, the gospel is a proper view of God, okay, God, the one true, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving, but also all-terrifying God of justice, good thing he's also a God of mercy and grace, that God, and a proper view of you in that we are guilty, ill-deserving, ill-deserving, sinners, desperate for a savior, because we're utterly hopeless otherwise, saved by this one true God in Jesus, by him in our place, living the life that was required of us, but we never could do, dying in, the, in our place, the death that you and I don't want to die, but we completely deserve the gospel. Okay, so to the, to the degree that we understand that, proper view of us, proper view of God, and um, it's all over Nehemiah. He, he says, great and awesome God, oh, look how sinful we are. So, 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 so that gospel, Okay. To the degree that we understand that, we'll understand verse 4. And I'm guessing that some of us are not 100% there. And if you think you are, someone's lying, God or you. All right. So the glory of God. Um, this is something I completely cut out. Oh, man, because um, I guess God knew that I'd be going off of, on, on a bunch of tangents. But, um, but I, I cut this part out because hopefully we are going to talk about the glory of God. And... Um, and so I'm just going to make this part um, really quick. Plus, I would rather um, have us marinate on how, on how broken Nehemiah was and how we're so not. Um, so, so, so here's something that, that, that I'll tell you about the body church and its leadership. Uh, we will never preach something that God hasn't put in our hearts and hasn't been saturated with prayer. Um, the thing... I've cut out a bunch of things, and I was thinking last night, sinful me, um, confession here, I, I was like, Lord, but that would make for a banging sermon. Like, that's a cool point. Man, that's awesome. And then he reminded me, yo, yo, you're my mouthpiece. You don't, pie hole shut, you say what I tell you to say. We don't have that option of Christian um, men and women standing up here telling you um, the word of God. Particularly men. Um, we'll get on that later. See, that's why I shouldn't go off the tan- tangent. Um, the problem with, another problem with these kinds of messages is that uh, most of us probably don't even understand the glory and renown of God because we don't think he's glorious. Like, you don't understand the God of the Bible. You don't know the God of the Bible. If you're not rocked by the resurrection, you don't know the God of the Bible. If you're not rocked with the fact that, that we serve a God who owns everything, and if he needed something, he could make something out of nothing. If you're not rocked by that, you don't know this God. You just don't. Like, here, this is how phenomenal th- uh, this God is. First of all, he owns everything, right? So that would make a lot of us happy. Um, he could make anything that was not be. What did not exist, become. Like, this is the kind of God. It, and this is why I praise this God, because he doesn't even need all of this stuff. He doesn't even need to make any more things because the fullness and fullness of joy and the fullness of treasure is found in and of himself. God, that's the kind of God 
this is the God that we preach up here. I don't know the Santa Claus God, pixie dust God that, that other churches might preach about, but this is the God we preach. Okay? And, and if you're shopping around, since, I mean, our, 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 our front doors are, are pretty open. We get a lot of people in and then they leave. But um, I hope that this is a church for you. But, um, but if not, I would like to um, challenge you to, um, to look at the other churches that, um, that you want to be. Uh, if, if, if it's because it's just tickling your ears, then you might not want to be there. Otherwise, you'll be one of the people on the left. Okay, Matthew 7, 25. So verse 5, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God. Nehemiah doesn't use great and awesome the way we use it. You know, oh, that's an awesome taco. Uh, her hairdo's great. Okay, that's not, you know, that's not how they used to use it. Nehemiah, wouldn't, you wouldn't have heard Nehemiah say, yo, that falafel was awesome. You know, baklava, legit. Okay, he, he, that was specifically used for, the, for the, the one true God, the great I am, the Alpha, the Omega, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Okay, the words we attribute to petty things, uh, like great and awesome are words we attribute to petty things relative to the definition of those words and definitely compared to the word, John 1.1. 1, 1. Okay, so this is the kind of, this is the God that Nehemiah was trying to, um, was, was worshiping. Okay, the one who owns everything, keeps everything um, together easily. Okay, and Ephesians 2, 7 says it's going to take the coming ages for us, to, for us to be able to hashtag all of his brilliance, all of his grandeur, all of his magnificence. It's going to take the coming ages to hashtag all that. And actually, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't even scratch the surface before we ran out of language. Okay, this, this is the God that, um, that I'm talking about. Are you rocked by this rock and redeemer? Does it hurt you when this God is, is put to shame on TV? Does it hurt you when you're watching willfully a TV show that willfully blasphemes God? Confession time again. I really like South Park. I think they're brilliant. For real, I think they're brilliant, okay? But here's the thing. They could do that because we deserve it. They could mock the Christians and the God of the Christians because, because we defame his name with how we live. With, we say things with our um, lips, but we don't live it out with our lives. Our, here, read Psalm 115. The unbelievers ask, where is your God? Why wouldn't they ask, where is our God? When the only time um, we're in pain is when we lose, I don't know, man, it just, this is all impromptu, but just the, the only time that, that we're in pain is when something of us is hurt, not of God. When his people are struggling, you could care less because you're all about you, YOLO, right? So why wouldn't people like South Park make fun of um, your Jesus? Your Jesus sucks. Your Jesus doesn't transform your lives. Why wouldn't they make fun of that? I got to get, all right, hold on. We're we're running out of time. But, But do you get what I'm saying? Like, is your God worth glorifying? If your life screams not, what, man, read Matthew 7 tonight. Read Matthew 25 tonight. Ask God if that applies to you. If it does, call somebody. One of the worst things, actually, um, Shanley says it, one of the worst things you could do during an emergency is what? Panic. Okay? And the reason he says that to me a lot is because like, I'm, I'm, I'm panicky, bro. You know, like, coffee, no creamer. You know, like, I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Like I'm, a, anyway. So, um, and I'm gangly, so it's ridiculous. So, um, so one of the worst things you could do during an emergency is panic. But here's something that you need to panic about. This is an emergency that you need to panic about. Is if is, is if you're indifferent to this God and the gospel. If you're unaffected by this God and the this gospel. If you're unaffected with the fact that His people are suffering. 
if, if you leave here just saying, cool, he stuttered a lot, didn't keep his notes, went all over the place, have no idea what he's saying. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the extent of my Christian walk. If you're unaffected by this, it's an emergency that you need to really look into, you need to really pray about. We're going to have um, people um, it, uh, beside these doors um, that will willingly pray with you, that'll, that, that are willing to walk with you through this, okay, because we realize it's not a game, and we would love um, to, to walk with you in that. Now, um, am I trying to make you feel guilty like, like 2 Corinthians 7.10 type guilty, the, the worldly guilt? No, because that only leads to what? Regret and death. That's it. But if the Holy Spirit of God has gifted you, okay, granted you with conviction today, then man, I would, we would love to just sit, we, join a life group. We would love to, to, to work that stuff out. Because look, we all have something in common. We're all sinners in need of grace. So why would I be ashamed to tell Jason my sins? When I know that he has the same kind of things. So that's the confidence I walk in. I'm like, hey, bro, and da 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 da. And if he says, you know, you need to repent, da da da, I'll I'll repent, knowing that someday I'm gonna get him back because he's sinful too. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Please don't do that. Lionel, cut that out. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like we have this in common. Um, it, it says in verse five through seven. Uh, you know, we confessed our sins. Man, this is how we're gonna start seeing God is glorious. Is when we we know who we are in light of who God is. Man, that's when life really happens, man. Um, I was talking to a brother Abe um, Saturday night, and that's all he's been wanting is a real community where men will kick his cup. Only the guys will know that. Like, that's all he wants. You know, his wife wants people. Um, Alma was talking to her. Like, she just wants community, someone to, to be able to, to chop it up uh, in terms of God, what he's doing, and um, how can we live in light of this gospel? I mean, it's here. It's here. And, 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 and I just pray you, just, you, you take advantage of, of what God has given you in that community. Because, um, I'm going to skip all this. The terrifying thing in Matthew 25 is that, and the reason I'm asking you um, if, if God's renown is on your radar, is because Matthew 25 what kind of questions do they ask? What? When, did, when were you hungry and I didn't feed you? When was you da-da-da-da? They were in a state of shock. Like, what are you talking about, Jesus? I did all that. I did read my Bible ten times a day. You know, I did serve in a bunch of ministries. See, it wasn't even on their radar. It was not on their radar. So, so I'm asking you today, if this is not on your radar, if God's glory is not on your radar, that's a yellow flag. That's a yellow flag, okay? And unless the Holy Spirit is merciful towards you, um, I know, just, I'd be devastated. Um, one of the things I've been praying about is, and I, I would be devastated that um, after my last breath, you know, um, tens of thousands of years from now, I'd be devastated if I saw one of you guys' face in hell. So that's, that's where I'm coming from for this sermon. So we are all sinners rightfully deserving all of God's wrath. Congratulations. Now, look, I don't mean that sarcastically. Okay, I don't mean that sarcastically. Jesus in, in Luke 5 says what? Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. So if you know your true condition, and that's a blessing. A lot of people should, should be jealous of you, Sh should be envious of you, okay? Because Jesus didn't come, um, I heard it said, Jesus didn't come to make um, bad people good. He came to make dead people live, okay? So if, you, if the Holy Spirit of God has been um, gracious to you, um, we, we, we can, um, so if the Holy Spirit of God has been gracious to you and, and allowed you to see your sinful self, and that is a gift, okay? And I exhort, I, I urge you to please, as, as we sing these last few songs, I urge you to, to interact with God. Ask him, like, is this applicable to me? Is this applicable to me? Because if it is, 
Now do something about it. Okay, start working out your salvation with fear and trembling, like it says. Okay, so, um, so we're going to finish it up. Jude's just going to do what he does. Um, we're going to read verse 9 and 10, and, and, and just, we'll just cut it short. Um, but if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of the heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and uh, your strong hand. So see, there is hope if you do his commandments, which puts us back to what we already talked about. We cannot do his commandments fully. We fail daily. So that's, that can't be the hope, right? trying to think of how to say this because I didn't write it the way I wanted it. Um, okay. So technically we are hopeless in that we absolutely cannot clean ourselves up, right? We talked about that. We are absolutely hopeless when it, it comes to being able to earn God's favor, right? So we're hopeless there. But, but, right, Ephesians 2, 4. But God being Merciful and gracious. So, so, but he did not leave us without hope. So we're hopeless there, but he didn't leave us without hope. Okay, because the good news is obviously not that Nehemiah's heart was broken and ours do not, right? The good news is that Nehemiah's heart is a reflection of, of God's heart, okay? His heart towards the helpless, broken people that if he does not intervene, they're dead. The good news is obviously not that Nehemiah drew near to God and, and because of that God drew near to him because some of us here are pretty far out. Some of us here are pretty far off and you feel it and if you don't feel it and you have this thriving relationship, then fantastic. I pray that you go to someone that's not feeling it, that's out in the out, 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 blah, outskirts. Okay, so that's not the good news that Nehemiah did it. Okay, the good news is that we have a guarantee, James 4, 8, that if we draw near to him, he'll what? He'll draw near to us. So that's our hope. Okay, the good news isn't that Nehemiah prayed for them. The good news is that, is that Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit was already praying for them and already praying for us and continues to do so, Romans 8. Okay, the good news isn't that even though um, they were all exiled all over the place, he consistently made a promise. Remember this, remember this, remember this, remember this. Throughout Nehemiah, remember this, remember this. I will gather you. doesn't matter how far off you are. I will gather you, okay? And the reason I can gather you is because Christ became the ultimate exile from heaven so that we are not exiled from, from the love of God. Okay, that's the hope we get, to, um, we get to really just hope and pray for and know that it's real. Okay, the good news isn't that um, God allowed them to rebuild walls. And that's not the good news. We're in an elementary school. What you, how's that applicable to us? Right? The good news is that we have one in Christ. We have someone in Christ who willfully, for the joy set before him, Hebrews, for the joy set before him, he willfully had his body broken, right, like the walls of Jerusalem, so that, um, it, and the good news is that in John 2, 19, talking about his resurrection, he says, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise up, and in doing so, he built the greatest wall ever for us, in that it, it see, these, these Israelites, man, uh, if you had no walls, you were defenseless, right, and, that, and that's why it's really important. Um, now we have this wall, this great wall, right, in Jesus Christ, protect, um, protection from the ultimate thing that we should be terrified about, which is what? Death. Okay? Death has no more power. Okay? All, uh, we get to know that the death of death, I love this book, death of death was found in the death of Christ. That's the hope we get to, um, to hold on to. The good news is not that Nehemiah wept. But that in Luke 19, Christ wept for Jerusalem, for you, for me. 
okay? And that was, uh, in context, on his way to the cross. And we get to rest on the fact that um, on that cross, everything, all of your failures, all of your not caring about God's glory, all of your, you know, um, dismissing a brother or sister when they needed help, um, all of that was nailed at the cross. And actually, God knew that you would mess up. And the cross is the, it's his historically um, objective proof that he knew that you would mess up before the foundations of the world. Okay, so um, that's, that's really our hope. And so um, we're going to sing a couple, I'll pray us out. We're going to sing a couple of songs. And um, as you go about your way, um, man, I would just encourage you to, um, to interact with God and, and see if this applies. Amen? All right.